again to howtocookgreatfood.com. If you haven't already, please click that button and subscribe to our channel on the menu today. And as you can see, cauliflower cheese, really simple. What we're gonna do is steam a bit of cauliflower, get it into an oven proof dish. We're gonna make a white sauce with a bit of cheese, chuck a bit of cheese on the top, whack it in the oven. It's done, it's absolutely delicious. One of my all time favorites actually. Let's go and do it. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our cauliflower. As you can see, I've just cut mine up. Cut it as big or small as you like, really. We're gonna steam this, so I've just got a little bit of water in there, touch of salt, gonna get that on, on the cooker, lid on, steam it, kind of, I wanna do it just for like three or four minutes, so I want it to kind of, I don't want it to fall apart, I want it to be still nice and crunchy. The balance of the cooking will happen in the oven. Okay, so why our cauliflower is just steaming away there? Just, just look at the basics of the sauce that we're gonna be making. So I've got some plain flour there, some butter, some milk, and some cheese. We're gonna be using cheese in the sauce and on top of our cauliflower when it goes into the oven. Now we can be adding different spices. You could be putting some nutmeg in here. Uh, we're gonna be adding some salt and pepper, oregano, sage. I mean, you can take it in any direction you want or just salt and pepper and that's it. Uh, very simply, we're gonna get this in a pan and we're gonna to start to slowly cook it. I'll explain more as we're going along. Drain the water off, and I've now got it into this glass oven-proof dish. You can be using ceramic or metal if you wanted. Also, I've grated my cheese. Let's get over to the cooker. Okay, so you're gonna need a pan of some sort. I'm just gonna do it back in this pan. It's nice wide, you can see what's happening. Um, it's actually probably a bit big. You kinda of want like a nice small saucepan, but just for demonstration purposes, it works well. Okay, get your butter in and melt it. Now, you wanna do this on a nice and low heat let's melt that nicely and gently and again we're going to be adding flour to that mixing it in and making the roux all quite slow that's what we want to do i'll be back in a moment when that's melted okay so there's our butter melted and that was like kind of a heaped tablespoon i suppose now let's go in with our plain flour i'm going to just sprinkle that in there Right, three of those. Then what we need to do is we need to start mixing this in. You don't need loads and loads of flour. And we need to cook this on a kind of lowish heat. And as you can see, it's kind of forming together, which is called a roux. We're gonna cook that. And what you're looking for here is a kind of shortbread, a kind of biscuit, or a cookie smell, as you'd say, in uh, the States. So we're gonna slowly, slowly, we're not gonna make a load of this sauce and this is gonna just be enough, I think. So we're gonna slowly just keep moving this around on a kind of gentle heat. And we're gonna do this for about four to five minutes. Keep it moving all the time. Okay, so this is cooking beautifully. Now, it can change color a little bit, but don't get it too dark because it'll just start to get a bit bitter and not very nice. Let me just have a little taste of that. Yeah, so what's happened now is the flour taste has gone and it tastes more like a cookie or a biscuit, if you know what I mean. Now we're gonna add some milk. Now, let's add a little bit first, get it in. And this is why you don't wanna use too much flour because you'll end up putting about four liters of milk in otherwise. It really sort of, you know, goes crazy. And again, we're on a low heat. And we're gonna be mixing this around, trying to get as many lumps out as we can. And looking at this now, I'm gonna need to add about the same again, milk. So what I'm gonna do is cook away here for about three minutes. Now keep it moving at all times now. And then, yeah, I'm gonna add about the same again, which is like a glass, that glass there I had. And I'm gonna slowly add some in and keep cooking back soon. There you go. So that was like twice the amount of milk, so two glasses. Now, really it's quite lumpy still. Don't worry about that, because I'm gonna whiz this up in a minute, get it really, really smooth. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go for some black pepper and some salt. Now you could be now putting in a bit, like I say, 
or well, anything you like really, but um, what's very common, let's get that salt in there, nutmeg, if you get some nutmeg sprinkled in there or grated in there, that'd be lovely. You could even put in a little bit of mustard, like a Dijon mustard or an English mustard, not a nice strong English mustard. I mean, that will completely change the colour of it, but give it a really distinctive flavour. I'm keeping it nice and straight here, just with the salt and pepper. I keep mixing it. Like I said, don't worry about these lumps right yet. I'll show you what's going to happen in a moment. And that's beautiful. That's got that lovely, creamy, bechamel type flavour. Okay, a couple more minutes and I'm back. We're going to add some cheese into this. That is lovely. Okay, now I've got a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese, which I like in the mix, and a nice handful of our cheddar. And obviously the balance of the cheddar is gonna go on top. If you want it, it's actually nice sometimes. You put some Philadelphia or cream cheese in this as well. Works wonders. I'm loving that. Okay. As it's cooking, it's thickening, as you can see. So maybe a bit too thick. So if that's the case, you know what we can do? Let's get a splash more milk in there. You get it to the consistency that you require, that you like. And then what I'm going to do, like I say, to smooth it out, I just get my blender, my hand blender in there, absolutely 100% smooth, so don't worry about any lumps. I'll be back. In like one or two minutes. Keep stirring all the time. Okay, so I'm really happy with that consistency. So off goes the heat. And then like I say, let me just grab my blender. I love these. I've told you about these before if you're regular to the channel. Go and buy one. They're really, really cheap. They're amazing. We use them all the time. Breakfast soups and whatever. So I'm going to blend that up. Get that in. Zoom! Beautifully smooth. Super, super, super smooth, delicious. I like it kind of quite thick like that. Right, really simply, we're gonna get that onto our cauliflower, get some cheese on, get it in the oven. It's gonna be done. So we just need to mix this around into the bowl now, even it out a little bit. And we're simply then gonna get some cheese on the top, get this into a preheated oven. Now look, everything is cooked in here, isn't it? So all we're doing is getting that kind of lovely cheese melt over the top. I'm not trying to bake anything particularly. So what I'm going to do, preheated oven, and I'm just going to go max, full max heat. Pop this in. It's probably going to take about eight minutes maybe. That's going to be delicious. Okay, that's good. Get some cheese on there now. That's a nice bit on the top. Really simple. It's a really sort of lovely comfort food I find this one. And it goes there. Now if you want it, you can put some more nutmeg on the top if you were using nutmeg or a different herb. In fact, let me grab some of this, my favourite at the moment, which is smoked paprika. I love that. A little bit of that on the top. Okay, in the oven. Mine's maybe eight, nine minutes, full blast, preheated oven. See you when it comes out. All right, there you go. That's it, eight or nine minutes. Fantastic. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you soon. Lots of love.